Hey guys, I'm Chris from the Silver Symbol channel, and today we're on my workshop channel. We're going to be covering how I was able to ground my outside network installation where I don't have any wiring back to my house. Grounding is a big deal, and many people who have outside security cameras and network equipment think they've got it covered. They buy one of these things like this Ubiquiti version that's about 12 bucks and pretty cheap insurance. You open up the cover and of course there's two ethernet ports. Essentially either one can be an in or an out. Plug them in, close the cover, and you think the job is done. Seems pretty easy, right? Except if this is all you've done, you haven't protected your equipment at all. Because in addition to those two ethernet wires, there is one more connection that maybe isn't that obvious. This screw hole that is in fact the mounting hole also doubles as a grounding port. This metal tab runs all the way up to the ethernet jacks themselves. There's no such thing as a surge protector that can just kind of eliminate a surge by itself. They've got to have a way to dissipate any electrical power that you don't want. That grounding point is your path out. So you've got this unwanted surge that comes in and instead of just frying your equipment, you're going to safely move it out the grounding port right back into the ground. Now you can use one of these protectors in your house and that's fine. You could connect this grounding point to something like a water pipe or even use your grounding plug in your electric outlet. But when you're outdoors, you don't have that luxury. So if you've got things like solar network cameras, ethernet repeaters, you don't have any protection unless you install a grounding rod. Now, fortunately, grounding rods are actually very cheap. This 10 foot long rod costs about 20 bucks and you can install this yourself. It really just takes a few minutes and just requires some simple tools. I needed this grounding rod to protect the equipment on my gate. Now this is an independent gate, meaning it's not connected via AC power. There's no ground going back to my house. And this is a lot more than a gate, but it's running three cameras along with the gate, the network switch, and additionally, I even have a wireless access point. So there's a lot of stuff in here that I definitely don't want to lose. To get started, we've got to pick a spot to install our grounding rod. Now I'm going to go about four feet away from the gate. And then from here, I'll run one copper wire into my box that I can connect my network equipment into. We have got to drive this 10 foot grounding rod into the ground. You don't need to rent any tools. Just grab a small hammer. You can use a sledgehammer if you've got one. This mini sledge is going to be perfect for me. But the one trick that really works is grab yourself a five gallon bucket of water or a hose if you've got something nearby and soak the area that you're going to drive the rod into. The water simply acts as a lube, it softens the ground a bit and will make driving this rod in a lot easier. Just let out your frustration and keep hammering that spike in the ground. If you get tired like I did, just take a break. It doesn't make any difference if you start this thing one day and finish it another, nothing in the rod is gonna go bad. With a bunch of hammering, my wrist was getting sore, but I kept at it and finally I got this thing down to the ground where I had about six inches of the rod remaining. Now, in my experience, you are far better off burying your grounding rod because it's going to protect the end from damage. And don't panic about this damaged mushroomed out end. It's not a problem. Just grab either a hacksaw or a power saw like this. You'll get past the mushroom and now you've got a normal size rod. There are many inexpensive clamps on the market and you simply insert the wire into the clamp, tighten them up, and then you might consider that the job is done. I'm not going to use one of these clamps at all because when I'm done with this grounding rod, I want a permanent installation that's not going to corrode or get damaged and I can bury the whole thing under the ground and I'll never have to worry about it again. The only way you're going to get a connection like that is if you weld the copper wire to the rod. But of course, welding copper is not really an easy thing, but fortunately, there's an easier way that you can do on site with no special tools. You're going to buy this kit. Now, many years ago, these things were called CAD weld and I think the company might have gotten bought out and now they're NVENT. But all this is is a little miniature crucible. This kit sells for about 25 bucks and it's only gonna give you one use. But remember that grounding rod will last way beyond your equipment. This small little crucible has two holes in it. The first one goes over the rod itself. That's why it's critical that you cut that mushroom off so that you can slide this thing over. Next, it's got a hole on the side. That is where we're gonna insert our copper grounding wire. You'll slide your copper wire in and now we can see that the wire is right on top of the rod. The kit includes this little capsule. And this thing is filled with some sort of a powder. It's not gunpowder, but there is definitely a flammable material in it. Very similar to that stuff you may have seen in those videos on how they repair railroad tracks. When I light this thing, it's gonna get so hot that it's actually gonna become molten and it's gonna encompass not only the grounding wire, but the rod itself. Next, I'll insert this metal disc that they include in the kit. Now I can open the capsule of powder and pour it in. Now I'm told that this little capsule actually has kind of starting powder at the bottom. So as I'm pouring it in, the very final powder is actually the stuff that ignites it. Now I will tell you guys, this took a number of attempts. I've only used one of these cab well kits years ago, and back then I actually had an electric igniter. They came out with this kit specifically for a homeowner or somebody that doesn't do a lot of them, so that you could just do it without buying any special tools. 
but eventually the heat got inside the crucible. And I did panic a bit when it lit because I wasn't really sure if it was gonna explode. I couldn't really remember how intense the flame was. And now after waiting just a minute or two, I can go ahead and pour some water on this thing to cool it down. And then you literally break the crucible apart. And what you're left with is a completely welded connection. Next, I'll cover up this grounding rod and I'm gonna bury that wire completely until I can run it up into the box on the gate itself. And at this point, my grounding rod is complete. Now you probably noticed this is a pretty thick wire. It was a six gauge wire. And you're probably thinking, how am I ever gonna get that in one of those network protectors? Well, the simple answer is you won't. You wanna connect this wire to a ground bar. Nothing there, about five bucks a piece. You can tie in your ground wire and then you can use smaller gauge wires to make that final connection. And people will say that those ground clamps just don't fail and that I'm completely wrong. But the current electric code requires you to have two ground rods for your same single house. Now grounding rods do fail, they can wear out over time, but often they actually will fail because of the clamp or the wire that connects to them. I would much rather see them change the electric code to require a welded ground rod connection. So as of today, I'm grounded. Hopefully my gear is gonna be protected. And if you live in a lightning prone area like I do, spending this little bit of money can really give you good protection over time. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and subscribe to the Silver Symbol and the Workshop channel as well for more videos coming up.